Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the New Economics course. I'll be your lecturer, Jan Engelmann, and um, I'll give you first a brief introduction to the course, which will then be followed by two additional videos that actually have some uh, meaningful content on, uh, on New Economics. So uh, just as an information, again, we're still in, in this um, corona uh, pandemic. And during this period, this, this course will be taught online. So I will make sure to upload all my lectures, hopefully by Monday at noon. And uh, I will then ask you to watch those lectures and upload your questions about the day after. Um, around, let's say, between 3 and 5 on, on Tuesdays. I'll give you an exact time uh, on Canvas. We'll then have our Q&A um, on Wednesdays via Zoom. And the Q&A starts at 9, not at 11, as it says here. Uh, tutorials and Q&As are going to be on Zoom. There are two tutorials. I will be holding one, and Alejandro will be holding the other one. Uh, and if you have any questions about anything, please don't hesitate to email me at this email address that's shown here. Good. So again, as I mentioned, lectures are uploaded to Canvas. Q&As are now at 9 o'clock on Wednesdays via Zoom. Um, group 1 is the one I will be leading, is on Thursdays from 11 to 1, and we'll do this via Zoom. This is where you give your presentations and uh, where the group will ask questions. And the group 2 is led by Alejandro. The time for this is Fridays from 11 to 1, also with the location being on Zoom. Okay, so the topics that you can expect in this course include... Um, important aspects of neuroeconomics that have been discovered over the past, let's say, 15 years. Uh, that's about the age of this field, so it's a relatively young field. Um, but I think it's made a lot of breakthroughs already that, that are interesting and important to know about. So we'll talk about the value, uh, valuation, how the brain is involved in valuation. And in fact, you'll hear this a lot. There's a valuation system within the brain consisting of ventral medial prefrontal cortex and ventral striatum that's also involved in learning about the environment. So how do we gain experience? Uh, how do we learn when something's good versus bad for us? And again, the ventral striatum is, is an important aspect of this. We'll talk about individual decision making. So uh, models that allow us to explain how the brain may be involved in uh, integrating attributes about different choice options, integrating uncertainty or how discounting, temporal discounting comes about. And there's some interesting uh, new developments that, ex that extend this to the social domain that, that involve social discounting, which is basically reflecting how distant someone is from you and how much you would trust this person then in that case, um, which follows a similar trajectory like um, temporal discounting. And that brings me to social decision making, which is going to be the last part. The last two lectures will be on this topic, uh, where we'll talk about reciprocity, trust, social cognition and emotions and how these play into the types of decisions we make in, let's say, economic games. And obviously all of this will be um, explained in the context of neuroscience. So what is the relevance of neuroscience for economics and vice versa? How is the brain involved in economic decisions? So um, I look forward to giving these lectures to you. Uh, this is one of my favorite courses to teach, and uh, I think it's, it's highly interesting. Um, and I also look forward to our Q&A sessions to see what kinds of questions you have and insights you might have about, about the things that we learn in this course. When it comes to the tutorials, attendance is graded um, because it's important to have everyone there for discussions. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to... Um, after the presenting group is done, we'll split you guys into smaller groups in breakout rooms in Zoom where you can then discuss topics that you guys came up with yourself um, during the readings uh, that will then be discussed in more detail. Um, in the first week, we don't have tutorials. In fact, we have a crash course which is basically another lecture on all the neuroscience methods that you should be aware of. So I'll give you a brief overview, uh, similar to the one that I give to the Neuroeconomic Methods course. So for those of you that take this course, you don't need to watch this again, unless you want repetition, which can be useful in, in some occasions. So um, 
This is basically to give all the economists a background on neuroscience and the types of methods we can use to manipulate, but also to observe the brain in action. Um, and this will be posted probably Wednesday afternoon, and then you have a day to watch it. And then Friday, um, during the usual tutorial time, we'll talk about this in a Q&A. I will write an email as well to everyone to make this clear. Um, again, tutorials are basically organized around your presentations. So this is a forum for you guys. You will be split into groups of three to four, maybe two to four people. You will be given a paper that you will then critically review and talk about this paper um, in a short 25 minute presentation. And the rest of the time will then be used for you to explain to us some of the aspects of the paper, um, but also for us to discuss what's relevant ab about this paper and what, what does it add to our understanding of how the brain may be involved in, in economic decision making. And for this, I also ask you to post your questions weekly on Canvas about the papers, about the two papers that we uh, read every week for the tutorials. Um, this will involve questions that may be related to you understanding, let's say, the methods or the experimental design, but more importantly, general questions about the relevance of this article and, um, well, how you think this article uh, plays in with, well, about the debate between economics and neuroeconomics, namely, how do the, how does the brain, um, how does understanding what happens in the brain help neuroeconomics and how does understand um, how we value things, um, which is basically the topic of economics, help us understand how the brain works. So this, this sort of bilateral or bidirectional communication between the two main fields that make up neuroeconomics. There will be further informa information about this. I will be announcing this on Canvas again to, to give you some more details on this, but it's also in the course manual that you can have a look at on Canvas. So here's the course schedule that uh, gives you an overview of the course. Um, we'll have the topics, the different topics that I've mentioned. Uh, those are the lecture topics that I'm mentioning there. And obviously we'll meet for Q and A's after you've seen the video lecture. Note that this week there is a crash course instead of a tutorial. So we'll have a uh, neuroscience crash course, uh, which is basically a lecture that I'll record and post by hopefully Thursday. Um, that'll give you an overview of, well, Wednesday, I should post it by Wednesday, I think. That'll give you an overview of the neuroscience methods that are used and a little bit of neuroanatomy to give the economists um, some sort of background and bring them up to speed with neuroscience. Note that there are no tutorials during this period. Uh, what else can we see from this? There's a term paper that's due on the 7th of March. I'll tell you some more details about this in a second. But generally speaking, uh, the term paper is a writing exercise for you to get some deeper insights into a topic that, that is of interest to you, um, that you want to get a little bit more information about. Uh, but again, I'll tell you a little bit more about this and we can keep discussing the term papers in the Q&As as well. And finally, the final exam will be taking place on the 24th of March via Proctorio. I know that's not everyone's favorite, but unfortunately, right now, this is the only way we can do this. Um, let's go into the course goals. So, well, as I outline in the course manual, my main goal is for you to get excited about neuroeconomics. Uh, it's, a, it's a relatively young field. Um, it hasn't made the impact that it could have on economics yet, but it will in the future. And one of the goals, obviously, is to find models that are biologically plausible, that make sense in terms of what we know about our biology and what we know about how our brains work. And so having these integrative models will be part of, of our, um, well, will actually expand our understanding about economic and social decision making quite significantly. At least that's the hope, but I, I believe deeply in this. So we will talk about cognitive and effective neuroscience um, to give you a, a background on this so that you understand the functions of, of brain networks. So the brain actually doesn't work in 
in terms of specific blobs. So there's not one region that does one singular thing, but it works in terms of networks where regions interact heavily with each other while we produce behavior. And these are the kinds of neural computations within these networks that I want you to understand. And we'll talk about this. Um, and even fMRI gives us some, some insights into these types of computations. Then we'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses of neuroscientific methods. And this is very important for you to be able to, to read the papers critically. Also what is said in, in the public press to give some critical evaluation of this um, because sometimes they heavily exaggerate what our findings actually mean. And to be able to critically evaluate this is, is a transferable skill that I want to bring across to you guys, um, because I find this very important. Now, uh, in terms of economics, we talk about basic economic decision-making models, such as prospect theory or um, other models that actually start integrating neuroeconomic insights uh, into into economic models, which is um, quite a progress that we'll talk about. We'll talk about the experimental protocols that are used in economics. This is something you've uh, been going through in um, behavioral economics and experimental economics already, but we'll go through this and what it means in, in the context of, of neuroscience. What are the limitations? Um, and what additions or what additional aspects do we have to take into account? And then uh, I want you to be able to evaluate the application of these experimental protocols and models in the context of neuroeconomics. And finally, we'll talk a couple. Uh, we'll talk about psychology. Um, it, this is basically the third discipline that is one of the core disciplines of, of neuroeconomics. Psychological models of individual choice will be discussed. And again, we, we will evalu be evaluating the application of these models in the context of neuroeconomics. So those are the general course goals um, that I wish to achieve with you by the end of this course. Here's your evaluation. So the presentation with your group is worth 20%. Again, you, you're going to be um, in a group of, let's say, two to four people. Uh, and this will be group work. It will be graded as group work, so everyone gets the same grade. Um, and I will, you should make sure that you meet with your group soon and then your instructors, so either Alejandro or me, we will meet with you uh, in the week of your presentation and have a quick overview, uh, well, a quick discussion about the paper and uh, what, you've, what you've created up until this point and how you're going to present this. Again, the weekly questions about the lectures and readings are very important. Uh, this is graded because it is so important. Uh, it'll be forming the basis of the discussion, which I want to be um, motivated by your questions, basically. Questions about each paper with 200 words max per question should be posted on um, Canvas every week uh, in a timely manner so that we can actually integrate those questions into the discussion part of the presentation. So I'll give your questions to the presenting group and they will choose one or two or three questions from, from the ones that you have uh, provided for further discussion, basically. Um, and the two question topics could be on the methodology. So if you have problems understanding something, we should go over this again in tutorials, but also about the background and the importance and possibly the interpretation of results. Um, and what this means for the fields of economics and neuroeconomics. Then you have a term paper. This allows you really to go into a topic that can be related to, to neuroeconomics. Uh, well, there has to be some relation, there has to be some neuroscience in this paper. Um, and I can give you some example topics from the years uh, prior, but I think anything is fair game. You can choose whatever is in, uh, of interest to you. It could be, let's say, what's the role of neuroeconomics when it comes to sustainability research, or when it comes to research on um, psychopathology, such as depression or anxiety. So those are all topics that we may not be discussing in too much detail, in the lectures, but that may be important to you or interesting to you, and then you can you can tackle those topics. But um, there has to be a relationship with neuroeconomics. 
And then finally, the final exam, which is worth 40%, uh, 40% this will be open questions based on the lectures and readings for lectures and tutorials. So we'll do this via Proctorio. I know this is not ideal, but um, again, it works quite well. Okay, so I thank you for your attention um, and I will get started on the actual lecture in a second and upload this very soon.